This right here is a portable DIY power station and this is the one I highly recommend that somebody or anybody watching this video build for relatively cheap and less than 10 minutes rather than buying a pre-made one by insert name brand here any any name brand uh, you want to find mainly because there's so many of them on the market you can't even keep track right there's obviously a few big name branded ones there's also lesser known ones it just seems like everybody's trying to build one or sell you one but i would say just build this because it's almost infinitely better on many cases right you can build it for cheaper you can swap components out you can customize it to exactly whatever your needs are and you don't have to worry about the company going like bankrupt or not existing or not honoring warranties or any of that stuff anymore because you have it built for you and you can switch out the components. It's easy to build, right? So if you wanna know more about this, stick with us. All right, so let's get into it, right? Obviously, this is very easy to build. You got a battery, you got some plywood, you got an inverter, you got a breaker. You technically, you may or may not even need that breaker in your case, but all you really gotta do is get a battery, take some construction adhesive, uh, adhesive the plywood to the bottom of the battery, get this inverter, and then screw the inverter to the plywood. Bam, done. That's probably like less than 10 minutes actually, right? That's all you really need to do, right? You may want to take some time to clean up the wires and all that kind of fun stuff, right? But other than that, less than 10 minutes, you can get it going. Uh, you know, obviously construction adhesive is gonna take up time to dry, so 24 hours, 48 hours, whatever it may be, but you know, you're not gonna be sitting there twiddling your thumbs while waiting for the construction adhesive to dry. So let's just say 10 minutes or less, right? You can get it going. So uh, let's go over some of that more in detail. So obviously this is a Bouch RV uh, battery. This is a hundred amp hour battery, which makes this battery 1.2 kilowatt hours, um, which, you know, this is group size 24. And if you're gonna make this, I would recommend getting this size, mainly because the inverter is this size. So if you got a smaller size, let's just say a 60 amp hour battery, then inverter is gonna be sticking out a lot already so at that point you're using the space just get a bigger battery right so there's that um but you know obviously if you're trying to reduce weight just go with the 60 amp hour battery or even the 30 amp hour batteries right there's batteries of this uh, capacity or, or of this uh 12 volt uh class in all different kinds of sizes i just use this one but whatever right so uh this battery I, we do have a full review of of this battery and this inverter independently on the channel. So if you want to know where off that, go check that out. I will go ahead and say this battery does have Bluetooth, even though it's unadvertised, it has Bluetooth. So it's easy to monitor and, and see all the specs and stuff like that, right? So uh, before you go off and say, oh, this is not very secure because the you're holding it together by glue, it's construction adhesive. It's been tested many times on many people's YouTube channels that this construction adhesive can hold hundreds, if not thousands of pounds, depending on how much we've applied. So, you know, it's fully cured, don't worry about it. Uh, this is a Bouge RV 12 volt, 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter, okay? They do make a 3000 watt, I believe, and even like a smaller wattage one. So if you wanna make a 60 amp hour battery and a smaller one, you could do that. You know, that's probably even more portable. And I would recommend you do something like that, right? The other thing I would recommend putting on here is, uh, so when I set this down, I always set it down on a piece of like foam to avoid scuffing this up, but you know, you could always attach that foam here. I just didn't do that mainly because, I don't know, I just never got around doing it. So anyways, there's that. Let's get into a little bit more, right? So like I mentioned, this has a full review of this item on, on the channel, but this inverter is interesting, mainly because this is a 12 volt pure sine wave inverter and it has a control panel. From the control panel, you can turn the inverter on and off see, you know, how much it's drawing, the voltage it's putting out, all that kind of stuff, right? And it's got two AC outputs, one 20 amp port here, and it also has a, a USB port here. So with one inverter, you can do all of that. You don't have to get another 12 volt uh, USB adapter to get USB, because this has it right here. And that's one reason I would prefer using this rather than you know another standalone system to get that going, right? So uh, wiring, very simple. You got two wires coming up from the battery. The positive goes into this Nader DC rated circuit breaker, which breaks the circuit between the battery and the inverter, and that goes to the inverter. So if you're gonna build this, 
Um, I would recommend the circuit breaker. You technically, I guess, don't need to have it, but if you don't have it, then it's kind of hard to, to completely kill power to the inverter, right? Because the wire is going to be sending it there even though the inverter is off. So if you're also going to build this, one thing I would probably recommend is you could put the wires straight up here and kind of make an offset that kind of comes up here and goes like this. That way you reduce this wire clutterage or better wire management to make it look better. That's something you can do. I just didn't do that many because I just didn't get around to doing it because I added the breaker because I wanted the breaker, right? So uh, there is that. So um, we don't need to go over too much of the capabilities of this because like I said, it's pretty straightforward, but I can hit the breaker. The inverter here will come on, it will beep, it's got the light, it's got, you know, the frequency, the voltage, the amount of capacity is coming from the battery. You could even turn the AC on and off, you can turn the inverter on and off, all from this, right? So in order to kill the beeping, I'm just gonna kill the inverter, so let's kill that. Pretty simple. So this actually, someone's gonna say, well, it's not really a power station because you don't have ability to charge it. And you would be right. So this is actually the third version I think I built of this thing. The first version I built did have charge capabilities. And that's where this comes in, right? So with charge capabilities, all you really have to do is get like a charge controller. I would recommend something like this, the Victron, and just put it here. This is a piece of OSB using construction adhesive here to this battery. Bam, done. So this was originally here, right? But then it had two wires coming to the battery or, or to the technically the breaker and then two pig, MC4 pigtails so you can connect solar panels. But you know, after a day or two of using that, I said, I'm never really ever going to charge this battery like on side of wherever I'm using it, using solar panels. So I said, let's take this off. Right. Uh, technically, I took it off and then I put a, a second version, which at that time was using uh, Anderson connectors here, so I could disconnect the battery from the inverter. Pew, right. I didn't have the breaker at the time, so that was the method I was using. And that uh, Anderson connector was uh, screwed on right here. So I eventually got rid of that, mainly because I told myself, I would never really just bring another 12 volt battery here and just swap out the invert. That, that would never really happen. But in my mind, I said, I, would, I may do that. So that was the idea. But you know, I said, that's not really gonna happen. So let's kill that, right? So this is the third version of this. But if you wanted to be able to hot swap batteries or not hot swap, swap out batteries, or if you wanted to extend capacity, you could obviously just build pigtails to other Anderson connectors here, add another battery, connect it, connect it, connect it. It's, you know, it's almost infinitely scalable. So let's compare this to something like an EcoFlow, right? So an EcoFlow, you could buy the EcoFlow unit. I don't know how much it costs nowadays, like 800 bucks or whatever. Um, and you could buy another smart battery for, I don't know how much that costs, like seven or 800 bucks, right? And you could add them, right? But for this, this battery, I think not on sale, which nobody pays retail price for this kind of stuff, is like 300 bucks. And this inverter, I believe is somewhere between between two to 300 bucks. They do make cheaper, smaller capacity versions of this inverter. So if you want a lighter version of this, go with the smaller battery, lighter inverter, easy peasy. So with, you know, let's just say uh, 500 bucks for this battery and this inverter, not on sale, mind you, the cables come with the inverter. The only thing on here that does not come with the inverter is this uh, circuit breaker. But like I said, you don't even need the circuit breaker. I just like having it. This display comes with the uh, inverter. The short display cable does not come with the inverter. It comes with a really long cable. I just made a short one. Uh, so, you know, it's pretty simple. 500 bucks, you get this, okay? You can get another battery. Let's just say you paid retail price. Uh, same battery, 300 bucks. You have to, now you have 2.4 kilowatt hours of capacity just by connecting the wires together. That's even better, right? So, you know, like I said, 500 bucks, power station. Uh, but I'm going to go out here and say no one's going to pay retail price. So you can get batteries of this size and this capacity for about like 150 bucks, right? You can get this on sale for roughly maybe around like 200 bucks. So for 350 bucks, I would just build this. I would not go out and buy, like I said, a power station that may go out of business or you may have to warranty that you can't really control. So I highly recommend you build this. So if you want links to any of the stuff that we use in the video, Click on the link in the description below. If you want other batteries that we've talked about in this video, you can make this even cheaper for let's say 350, click on that, but just don't buy it at retail price. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. I'll stop rambling. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.